Welcome to the training for production scheduling cloud. This is the last of 12 presentations. The main objectives of this lesson are to understand the factors that influence the overall performance of production scheduling, to know how to debug a production schedule, and to be able to extract a schedule file that can be passed on to Oracle support if necessary. Let's start with the first topic, performance considerations. The main performance aspects include the schedule refresh time, the schedule release time, the UI responsiveness, and of course, the solve time. These are driven by the schedule size and the schedule complexity. Schedule size is a direct result of the underlying data volume, and the schedule complexity is related to the various constraints in the schedule model. Now the data volume can be controlled via the schedule scope definition, specifically the schedule horizon and the item categories. And the relevant constraints are impacted by the constraint mode of the individual resources and the overall resource constraint horizon. Therefore, in order to influence production scheduling performance, schedule scope and constraint configuration are the key dials to work with. With respect to schedule scope, best practice is to ensure that a schedule only contains the data that is required. For example, if a schedule is generated every day and the longest lead times are less than a week, then a schedule horizon of several months adds no value, but instead increases the data volume and the size of the schedule unnecessarily. Similarly, only include those item categories that have to be scheduled with one another, meaning they share constraints or depend on one another. With respect to the constraints, it is advisable to focus on key bottleneck resources and to only constrain those. All other resources should remain relaxed. We discussed the different constraint types already in lesson four in great detail. In addition to constraining only bottleneck resources, it is usually not necessary to constrain the complete schedule horizon, but only up to a certain point in time. Now to do that, specify schedule option resource constraint horizon in days accordingly. Now let's review how to debug a production schedule. Here, we see the key steps used to debug a schedule if necessary and to try to understand what is going on. We explain each of those steps in more detail later on. First, review the schedule options that influence the schedule scope. Then check the resource constraint modes and resource constraint horizon. Before being able to extract any schedule data for analysis, you first have to get the schedule ID for that specific schedule. This is done via a REST service. When you have the ID, then you can use various other REST services to get different data elements and data element counts for that schedule, which you then can analyze. Finally, you evaluate that data and determine the right cause of action. In this example, we see how to use REST endpoint production scheduling plans with query parameter plan name in order to get the plan ID. This plan ID can subsequently be used to retrieve data from that schedule. So using this plan ID delivered by the previous REST call, 
you can get, for example, the count of all work order operations in a, in a respective schedule. The schedule with ID 50002, for example, contains 2749 work order operations. This table lists various sample REST API endpoints to retrieve data from a schedule, all of which might be useful for debugging potential performance issues. While the REST APIs help analyzing the scheduled data, production scheduling processes also generate log files that can be helpful in finding issues. The last action performed on a schedule is listed in the schedules page under last request. In this example, it is a solve, but it could also be a refresh, refresh and solve, repair or release. Each request has a unique request ID, which can be used to find the specific request in the scheduled processes UI. Let's have a look at that next. After navigating to the scheduled processes page, enter the request ID into field process ID and search. For the results listed, navigate to the log and output section at the bottom and open the log file of interest. In the log file, look for warning and error messages that may provide hints for what an issue might be. In this case, the log file does not contain any errors since the process was actually successful. The last topic now explains how you can download a schedule file that can be attached to a service request you might file with Oracle support. Insert the proper plan ID in the REST cause shown here and submit it in order to get a binary file. Save this binary file with a .dxt file extension somewhere on your file system. Then attach this file to a service request that you use to communicate with Oracle support. In the following demonstration, we will find the plan ID for a schedule, then perform some data analysis via REST APIs, and then also retrieve the schedule ID. Finally, we will have a look at the log files accessible in the scheduled processes UI for the schedule requests like refresh, solve, repair, or release. Now this is the schedule that we worked with before. We had defined it, we solved it after a refresh, and then we also performed some manual scheduling actions on it. And those were uh, completed with uh, repair and uh, they were successful. If I want to analyze the underlying data, I can use the REST services, which I submit via tool Postman in, in my case. Uh, you can use other tools as well. First, we use production scheduling plans uh, REST service with query parameter plan name. And this is the name that we have. And if I submit that, then I get the you know, plan information. But the key, key information that we want is the plan ID because this plan ID I can then use in other calls to identify the specific plan from which I want to extract data from or analyze data in. So I use again the production scheduling plans root service for this child and I want in this case the work order operations and I want to get a count uh, of those. So submitting that gives me again uh, some 
one uh, exactly walk order operation. And at the bottom of this, I get the total results, which in this case amounts to 132. So now I know I have 132 walk order operations in this schedule. Similarly, I could now analyze how many items, uh, how many resources, how many constrained resources, and so on I do have in this schedule. Another way to uh, analyze a little bit what is going on in a schedule, especially for longer running jobs like refresh, solve, repair, and release, is to utilize the request ID. This request ID belongs to that request. In this case, the last one was a repair. Let's navigate to homepage, the tools, and the scheduled processes. Let's get this into a hierarchy. So this was the last process that belongs to the repair. If I click on that, then I will see the log files that were created. In this case, for example, I can see like when the schedule was started. And this is really the engine. That's what calculates the solution in this case. Uh, can only see the various steps, and if something goes wrong, we would have possibly some information here. I see some details about uh, a manual scheduling change. Uh, here, there's other manual scheduling changes that were performed. I'm running a repair solve, and it was ultimately successfully submitted. So this is also a way to analyze and find information about uh, what is happening uh, on the back end. Here, that's another log. If there would be uh, issues and errors, then uh, there will be pointers in these log files which you can use. Finally, if you do end up in a situation where you need to enter an SR, um, Oracle support will likely ask you to extract the schedule file and you can do it as follows. Again, you use the production scheduling plans, rest service for the respective plan ID. And then with this notation, enclosure and engine state file, you can submit that call to retrieve a binary file, which you then can save and pass on to Oracle support. Suggest to save this as a .txt file, then we know immediately what uh, this is about. I have done that here already, so we will say yes. Now you can submit that together with a service request to Oracle support if need be. So to summarize, in this lesson, we learned about the various factors that influence performance of production scheduling and how to control those factors. Further, we covered how a production schedule can be debugged, and if necessary, how you can extract a schedule file that you can pass on to Oracle support.